In today's video, we're going to be talking about several of Wells Fargo's recent scandals, lawsuits, and legal settlements. We're also going to be talking about why I'm starting to think it's sounding better and better and better to just simply be your own bank. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about silver and gold. I also wanted to talk about Wells Fargo and using the bank versus being your own bank, but it really comes down to why I don't trust the bank. So many illegal and unethical business practices. We're going to run through a lot today. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new. Make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you want to get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. But today is Friday, July 16th, 2021. It's actually Thursday, July 15th, 2021. As I'm recording the video, filming it a day early. So I have no idea what the spot price is going to be by the time this video drops. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. But today I wanted to talk about Wells Fargo. I wanted to run through some of their many scandals. I'm sure it's common knowledge at this point, but just in case you were unaware of some of the scandals and some of the illegal business practices and some of the crimes that they have allegedly commit in recent years. For example, just recently they were exposed for creating 1.5 million fake accounts, allegedly. They also opened up over half a million credit cards without their customers' knowledge, allegedly. They also failed the living will test, which is what all banks are required to pass in the event of a bankruptcy, allegedly. They then went on to create another 3.5 million fake accounts, allegedly. They were then fined $2.1 billion for their involvement in the mortgage crisis, allegedly. And if right now you're thinking to yourself, yikes, that's pretty bad. Couldn't possibly get any worse. But wait, there's more. They then illegally repossessed over 400 homes because apparently there was a glitch in their computer system that caused that to happen, allegedly. And then, of course, as of just a couple of days ago, news came out that Wells Fargo was actually going to be closing all personal lines of credit, which, in my opinion, is to direct customers to other types of credit with higher interest rates. And that last one right there is what I really want to focus on in today's video. And what I'm going to do is include a clip from my most recent VIP Club live stream that I did just on Wednesday night. I go live every Wednesday. I also do monthly giveaways, daily silver and gold deal alerts, and a whole lot more. The link will be in the description if you want to join. But I'm going to include a clip. It's kind of a lengthy clip. I don't want to reiterate everything. So I'm just going to include that section of the stream that goes into full detail regarding this recent settlement and why I ended up getting a check from Wells Fargo. And guess what? It's probably going to silver and gold. Here's the clip. Here we go. By the way, there was something kind of important that I wanted to talk about really quick regarding something that's going on with one of the big four banks. For those of you who do not know what the big four means, it's the big four banks, Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America, City. Something kind of unusual is going on with one of those four. That one of four would be Wells Fargo. Now, I've been a Wells Fargo customer. I've also been a customer of one of the other four banks as well. But Wells Fargo right now, a little bit of controversy going on. Surprise, surprise. Wells Fargo seems to, you know, always get themselves in trouble. I'm not even going to get into the sketchy business practices that they've participated in in recent months and years. But there is something new. 
on the table. Wells Fargo is canceling personal lines of credit. That does not mean credit cards. That does not mean home equity lines of credit or anything like that. This is for personal lines of credit. Now, for a personal line of credit, those typically come along with slightly lower interest rates. So why are they canceling personal lines of credit? Didn't give all that much of a warning either, by the way. And by the way, I don't have any personal lines of credit, uh, period, let alone with Wells Fargo at all. So my takeaway from this was that this is removing people's liquidity. And not only that, it's kind of going to inevitably drive people to higher interest rate lines of credit, such as credit cards and Wells Fargo isn't exactly known for being very generous when it comes to the amount of credit that they give their card holders. They're kind of stingy when it comes to that. Plus, friendly reminder that a lot of credit cards have over 20% interest rate sometimes. So taking away people's personal lines of credit and pushing them in the direction of credit cards, to me, kind of sounded like that they're forcing customers into paying higher interest. And it seems like this is a way to fill their pockets even more. Friendly reminder, Wells Fargo is a bank, so I'm sure that doesn't really surprise many people. Now, once again, Wells Fargo has also recently been involved in some pretty sketchy behavior and what I would consider to be unethical business practices. I believe this is all said and done, and I just received something in the mail a couple of days ago. It's a letter regarding Wells Fargo's legal settlement. And at the top it says, you are receiving this notification as part of a legal settlement between Wells Fargo and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau addressing the bank's sales practices. Now, one of many things that some of you have probably heard of, and maybe some of you have not heard of, Wells Fargo had created pretty much fake accounts for customers without the customer's knowledge. And that's not even scratching the surface. I'm going to get into more detail about that later. But I ended up getting a check in the mail. And this has never really happened before, so I didn't really know what to make of it. But I got $269.05. $269.05. I got a check paid to the order of myself. And I thought that this was pretty interesting because, like I said before, Wells Fargo seems to keep getting themselves in trouble. I don't know what's going on with Wells Fargo over there, but uh, saying we are contacting you to share some information regarding your Wells Fargo deposit account reference below. We reviewed your account and identified that you may have requested to close this account previously. We have enclosed a check for $269.05 as reimbursement for any fees you may have been charged after the account failed to close. We apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused. The check also includes an additional amount of $18.05 to compensate you for the time you did not have these funds. Impacted account slash accounts. And then there's two even though the two are the exact same account. I don't know why there's two separate bullet points for the same exact account, but regardless. It then goes on to say, you know, for tax information, Wells Fargo may be required to report some of this payment amount to the IRS. <laughs> so I get a little bit of currency as an apology for their sales practices. So they wrote me a check as part of the settlement and it might have to get reported to the IRS and I might have to pay taxes on the settlement that they gave me back as an apology. I know this all sounds like common 
bank nonsense, but I had never gotten a check from Wells Fargo before. I was kind of unfamiliar with this whole ordeal, and then when I looked further into it, I thought it was kind of interesting. And by the way, just in case anybody's wondering, I do have the thing right here. I read, this is what I read before. You are receiving this notification as part of a legal settlement between Wells Fargo and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau addressing the bank's sales practices. So it's right here. And, like I said before, $269.05 check. Where is it? See? So I got it right here. I kid you not. This is a, <laughs> a real thing happening right now. And people wonder why I don't have the utmost conviction or very much trust when it comes to the bank. You never know what's going on behind closed doors. You never know what's happening, these little back room deals, these little fake accounts under your name, or if you request to close an account and you're under the impression that the account was closed but it actually wasn't closed, they were keeping it open. You never really know what's truly going on in the world. The bright side is that the Wells Fargo check will by around nine ounces of silver. Yeah, exactly. What was it, $269.05 or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. I haven't yet decided what I'm going to do with it, but it can also cover about half of the quarter-ounce gold coin that I was just talking about as well. Doesn't sound half bad. I can get me a little bit of gold on Wells Fargo. So I can take the settlement check, which is essentially an apology, giving me currency to win me back over as a customer. I can take that check and say, hey, you know what? Because that, that would be a really good idea, right? Wells Fargo screwed over their customers. And as a customer, I take that settlement check and put it right back in my checking account. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Screw that. I'm going to do something with it. I ain't leaving it in the checking account. <laughs> you imagine that? You think you have control. But when it comes to the bank, you have very little control. And that's actually one of my favorite things about silver and gold, which I have right here on screen. Like I often refer to it as, it's a physical at-home savings account. And I can deposit or withdraw my own money my own way and it's my own business and no one needs to know about it no one needs to worry about it no one needs to be hovering over my shoulder breathing on my neck wondering what I'm doing with our money because if you store it in the bank it's shared yeah of course it's yours but it's also theirs at the same time you're sharing it and anytime you Withdraw a little bit of cash. You got the bank over your shoulder asking you, hey, what are you doing with our money? That's ours. We share that. No more of that. I can't even remember the last time I stopped by the bank to withdraw cash. You want to know why? Because I don't even keep enough cash in there to have to go and withdraw some. I hold cash on my own. I store it my way. It's part of my stack. I stack silver, I stack gold, but I also stack a little bit of cash on my own. The amount of cash that I leave in the checking account is enough to pay the running bills, is enough to cover all of my credit card purchases. See, I use my credit cards for everything. I know a lot of people are against credit cards. I'm a big believer. I, I love credit cards. I use them all the time. None of my credit cards that I have, and I have more credit cards than the average American, not a single credit card that I own today I've ever paid even a penny in interest on. So I've never paid interest, never paid a late fee, 
Never paid an overdraft fee, never paid anything like that. Those things are all optional. And a majority of them are cashback cards where I've gotten all types of rewards for them. So I benefit far more as a card holder than the bank benefits from me. But that's why I leave some cash in my checking account because every single time I make a purchase with my credit card, the next day when it pops up that I have a balance, I pay it off right then and there in full on time before the due date. Every single time I make a purchase. I've never carried a balance and I've never paid interest. So that's the only reason I leave the amount of cash in my checking account that I do because all of my credit card purchases, I pay it off in full. As for a savings account, I've actually never had a savings account up until maybe one to two years ago. And it was actually closed due to inactivity because I didn't put any cash in there. Because I was like, well, what's a savings account? This thing is offering me 0.0001% interest rate. I could put the same amount of cash into like silver and gold and it would stand a far better chance of storing value and hedging against inflation rather than l losing the fight to inflation in a brutal bloody way or if i wanted to get even sneakier i could put that cash into i don't know the s p 500 which has an average annual rate of return of like eight percent don't forget, make sure to get your two free stocks by downloading Weeble. Link in the description. Maybe you'll get some mining companies like I did. 8% beats 0.0001% or whatever it is. Something to think about. Screw the bank. So yeah, that right there was 12, maybe 13 minutes worth of a stream that was, believe it or not, just about four hours long. Friendly reminder, I go live every Wednesday night in the VIP club. I also do monthly giveaways, daily silver and gold deal alerts, and a whole lot more. I guarantee you the value exceeds the cost. Link in the description if you want to be a VIP club member. But I wanted to talk about this today as pretty much supporting evidence for everything that I've been talking about for the last couple of years. My whole stance on being your own bank. And I do not believe you need to necessarily stack silver and gold to be your own bank. Even if you're 100% on cash, nothing else, just cash. I think you can be your own bank by doing things your way, by doing things on your terms. And if you need to dip into your physical at-home savings account, what I've always said, or what I've been saying for at least the last couple of months, if you need to essentially borrow money from yourself, consider it a loan. Write it down. Make a contract for yourself, agreeing that you will pay yourself back. And if you really want to, you can even add interest. If you take out, I don't know, let's just say $100, agree to pay yourself back 105 Or if you're working with the silver and gold and you need to take out 10 ounces of silver, so that you can liquidate and take the cash and do whatever you need to do with the cash, agree to pay yourself back 11 ounces of silver. That's what I personally believe being your own bank is all about. It's doing things on your own terms. It's saving money and or currency your way without the involvement or without any bank or government or financial institution or, or anyone or anything always over your shoulder keeping tabs on every single thing you do. It's doing things on your own terms, your way. That's what it's all about. We're all adults here, or most of us are at least. I'm pretty sure we can manage our own money. I'm pretty sure we can do it our way if we choose to. I'm not making this video to encourage people to give up on the bank. I still use the bank for a variety of different things. Different banks for different reasons. I haven't gone bankless. I don't intend on going bankless. That's not what this video is about. Primarily when it comes to saving money, when it comes to my savings account, in that regard, I've gone bankless. I'll be my own bank. 
I'll do things my way without anybody's approval or permission or or overseeing what I do. And of course, I stack a little bit of cash, but for the most part, my savings account consists of the precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms, not on YouTube's terms, my terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller and easier to manage. I'm posting exclusive VIP-only adventure vlogs. I also do giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout-outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course, you can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to hit that subscribe button like a Karen hits a bus window. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content bunch of brand new videos over there. I posted one about China banning cryptocurrency, one about AT&T cutting its dividend, other videos about real estate, videos about silver, videos about gold, and a bunch of others. Go check them out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 3,000 subscribers. We just hit 2,000, and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products. T-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stackin' T-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver Kraken coin, which, by the way, is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you. It comes out of my pocket, not yours. And, of course, last but not least, the brand new DYDSS Karen Free Zone t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug. My name is not Karen. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. What are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? Regarding Wells Fargo's variety, long list of recent scandals from allegedly creating millions upon millions upon millions of fake accounts, over half a million credit cards opened up without their customer's knowledge, failing the living will test, which was designed for all banks to be able to pass in the event of a bankruptcy, being fined $2.1 billion for their involvement in the mortgage crisis, illegally repossessing homes, and of course, as of lately, canceling all personal lines of credit. Is that something that's going to be affecting you in any way, shape, or form? Do you not use Wells Fargo? Are you a Wells Fargo customer? And what are your thoughts on being your own bank with silver, with gold, maybe even platinum and palladium, and of course, maybe even a little bit of cash? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.